Hello, I'm Steve Dynan and welcome to my new company, Carbon. Most of you already know that I sold at Dyn Engineering about five years ago, but what most of you don't know is a couple years ago I started a new business called Carbon. And we make high performance products not just for BMW, it's for BMW, Mercedes, Porsche, Audi, and likely in the future Aston Martin and Ferrari and McLaren as well. We started out with making BMW parts because we're famous for BMW parts and we know a lot about them, and then we moved on to Mercedes Benz. Today we're going to do a walk around on a C63 AMG, which is the first Mercedes complete vehicle that we have done. Uh, and it's going out for a media launch this next week, but I wanted to give you all a preview of what we did to the car and why we did it. One of the most important things about modifying a car is balance. A lot of people get carried away with doing too much of something and it ruins the car. So what we're trying to do here is talk about the right compromises to still keep it a nice car, something you can drive every day. Also, our new company has a race team. We race an IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge, race an Audi R8, and we won the race in Sebring a couple of months ago. And you can watch all those races on NBC Sports Network if you'd like to check them out. We're gonna start with wheels and tires. Right here, we have the wheels and tires that came on the car. And this is the rear, which is a 285, 30, 20. And we made custom wheels, forge lines. We'll go into that in just a minute. So we could fit larger tires on the car, which is a 305 3020. So we picked up 20 millimeters on the rear of the car. In the front, we went from a 255 19 to a 285 3020 in the front. So basically the front tire now is the same size as the rear tire used to be. We also picked more high performance tire, bigger tread blocks, more contact patch on the road for a large increase in grip. So we use forge line wheels. And the reason we use them is they're very strong and very light, but the most important part of it is you can pick any offset and any width you want and they make the wheels custom for your car. This gives us the ability to fit the most amount of tire on the car. The reason we're able to get a 285 front tire is we can actually move the wheel inboard and make clearance so it won't rub on the fender. The other reason we do that is a phenomenon called scrub, which increases the stability of the car. So let me explain. Here you see this poster and in the center is the stock black wheel. And scrub is a dimension that's basically, if you take the upper and lower ball joint, you draw an imaginary line through it until it hits the ground. And the center line of the wheel and tire, the distance between those two is scrub. And what that does is, if you hit a bump at the wheel and it pivots here, the wheel pulls and yanks the steering wheel in your hand. Now, obviously they could design the suspension system so it has no scrub, but what that does is, that gives you road feel. When the road changes surfaces or gets cracks or ruts in the road, you can feel the tension of the steering wheel, gives you feedback to the driver. But too much of it makes the car dart around and hard to drive. And we compensate for that in a couple different ways. Most aftermarket wheels and tires are like the blue one here, where they actually move most of the wheel to the outside. And they do this because they make a standard wheel that fits a whole bunch of cars, and they machine the back pad to move it around a little bit so they can fit as many miles as possible, but they don't build a wheel specifically for the car. By going the forge line, we're able to build a wheel specifically for the car and make the wheel wider and move it in. Because when you move the wheel to the outside, you wind up with more scrub. You can see the blue arrow here. And that makes the car dart around and follow ruts under braking and makes the car unstable. We also do some suspension modifications, which I'll get into in a little bit, to help improve the situation as well. On our wheel, we made the wheel a half inch wider, but we moved a lot of the wheel to the inside. So there's a minimal amount of scrub change from the stock wheel. And we're able to get a 285 tire on the car and get the most amount of grip in the front. And the rear, we also move the wheel in a little bit because again, the same thing happens in the rear. When you have the wheel moved out and you add scrub, when you accelerate, the extra power and the extra traction pulls on the bushings and causes the car to steer in the back and makes the car snake during acceleration, makes the car difficult to control. So again, we move the wheel a little bit to the inside, went up on the tire size, so we minimize the scrub change. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the suspension design and also how we increase the stability of the car acceleration traction and braking traction, as well as increased grip. So street cars have rubber bushings in the control arms, and here's one right here for the rear thrust arm. And the problem with rubber bushings is twofold. One is because when the bolt is tight and the control arm moves, you have to flex the rubber. It actually adds spring rate to the car, makes the car less compliant. It also have movement longitudinally, and it makes the toe in the car change when you accelerate and brake and causes the car to be unstable. Now the reason they put them in a car is when you hit cracks and bumps on the road, they make less noise. That's the benefit of them. But they actually make the ride quality worse because of the increased spring rate. 
and they reduce traction in the vehicle. So one of the things we do with the high performance wheels and tires is we want to increase the stability of the car by reducing deflection of the rubber bushings. We talked about how we increase the scrub and while we try and minimize it with the proper offset on the wheels, we still have some increased scrub, plus we have more power and more traction, and more power and more traction distorts the bushings more and, and causes them to have more compliance than the original manufacturer designed. So for us, the suspension system is not just springs to lower the car like a lot of people do. It's to redesign the entire suspension system so it works correctly. So in the rear, we actually take this rubber bushing and press it out, machine the control and put a snap ring in it, and we put a bearing in the back. And this reduces the compliance of the rubber bushing, but also the bearing moves more easily than the rubber and makes the car absorb bumps better and makes the car squat better and put down more power. We also take the rear toe control link and replace it with one with rod ends on both sides and for the same basic reason. It adds compliance and increases stability. Makes the car put down a lot more power, makes the car a lot easier to drive with the big wheels and tires on. We also do a similar thing in the front. We take the front lateral control arm, machine it, put an eccentric bearing in it, and this has a sealed ball joint to keep noise and dirt out and it's also quieter than a conventional monoball and it's also eccentric. The eccentric bearing allows, allows us to be able to adjust the camber so when the car is lowered we can reduce your tire wear or if you want a more aggressive setup for the racetrack enables you to increase the camber. And they don't really make any noise because the type of the bearing design they're sealed like a through ball joint so they're very quiet. A lot of aftermarket suspension systems use inexpensive rod ends and they pop and groan. A lot of people use urethane bushings for camber adjusters and they squeak and groan as well. This has no compromise for noise. We also take the lateral thrust arm in the front that goes to the front that takes the forward steering and braking and we also put an eccentric bearing in that and again it's a sealed ball joint, a through ball joint and this enables us to adjust caster. It makes it the car will die better under braking and be more compliant and brake better. The combination of all these parts makes the car have a substantially better ride quality and grip, a small penalty in noise, but we think it's well worth it, and goes really well with big wheels and tires. Now I want to talk about our coilover kit that we make to lower the car and make the car handle better. This is a typical aftermarket coilover kit sold by other people, and there's a couple problems with it. First off, they buy generic springs off the shelf of a fixed spring rate rather than designing the correct spring rate for the car. And the spring rate you can buy for this particular car is not right for the vehicle. They actually soften the front of the car and the car already has a problem with oversteering. It just makes the car oversteer more. They also, because the spring is not the right length and not wound correctly for preload, they wind up adding an additional helper spring in. And when they put the two parts together, they make creaking and propping noises when you drive around. And then they make this plastic insert in the bottom with this to fit inside it, which also makes creaking and popping noises when you drive the car around. However, they can get through a lot more suspension systems faster because they make generic parts that fit a lot of different cars and makes it easier for them to get them done. What we do instead is we custom design our own spring for the vehicle and the spring is wound progressive so it has preload in it so we don't need the secondary spring. We also design the spring so it fits in the original spring insert that goes into the control arm or on the front shock absorber so it doesn't make creaking and groaning noises. It still has the ability to adjust the ride height with the threaded collar like the other suspension system, but it doesn't have any side effects of making any noise and the spring rate is correct. On this particular car, we actually increase the front spring rate around five to 10% because we've added a lot of grip in the front of the car with wider wheels and tires in the front, plus the car had a tendency to oversteer already anyway. We also make a fixture that comes with a suspension kit to drill the front sway bar to make the front sway bar adjustable so we can add more stiffness up front. We also add bump rubbers and, and packers in our suspension kit, and a bump rubber is a progressive spring. What you want to do is you want to have the bump rubber slightly off the shock body so it's not touching a normal cruising down the road. That way it gives you better ride quality, and then when the car rolls in the corner and the suspension compresses, the bump rubber engages and increases the spring rate and gives the car support, support in the corner. You can also tune the balance of the car more stiffness in the front or more stiffness in the rear. This is something we do a lot with race cars. We do that by putting what's called in a packer, which is a little plastic disc that slips in and adjusts the space. We provide new bump rubbers that are shorter, so when you lower the car, the car still has travel. They also have different durometer than stock, so it still absorbs the appropriate amount of energy. And then we include packers with the kit as well. So if you want to raise the car up for more ground clearance, you add more packers in. If you lower the car, you take packers out. That way the gap between the shock body and the bump rubber is correct. For the proper spring rate for the balance of the car. 
Then a result of all these changes, the control arms, the bushings, uh, the shock spring, bump rubbers, has dramatically improved handling, excellent ride quality, no noise like a typical coilover in the aftermarket, no noise from the control arms from the bearings because of the through ball joints, very compliant cover bumps, brakes really well, accelerates really well. Phenomenal car. Now we're going to talk about power increases. Since we have the car handling well and good wheels and tires on it, we know it'll handle the power. So first off, we want to talk about software. So this is the software gain on the engine. We wind up with 596 horsepower and 689 pound-feet of torque. Stock, the engine makes 503 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. With small turbochargers on modern cars, and, they, and they've used small turbochargers on modern cars to reduce turbo lag, you wind up with the ability to make a lot of torque because the turbocharger is very small. But they have a tendency to fall off at higher RPM and not make as much top end power as we'd like. I want to explain the reason why. So this is a compressor map. And what a compressor map is, is a map of the efficiency or the sweet spot of a turbocharger. So this is airflow across the bottom and pressure ratio or boost in this axis. And if you coordinate the two, it tells you the efficiency of the turbocharger. And what this basically means is when you're 0.8, it means basically 20% of the air pressure you're making or increased in boost pressure is being lost to heat. And as you increase the boost and increase the airflow, it gets less and less and less efficient. You can wind up with 58% out here. So the problem is you can keep on adding boost with software at higher RPM, but the turbocharger just won't respond because it just makes too much heat. The manufacturers are already running on the high side of the compressor map as it is to try and improve turbo response and you try and turn the power up in the engine and you wind up running off the end, it just won't respond. So it's always easier to get a lot more lower RPM torque than it is higher RPM horsepower with just software. So how do we fix that? Well, basically we put a bigger compressor in the turbocharger. And when we put a bigger compressor in the turbocharger, this compares our, just our software alone with what we call our power package. And our power package has turbocharger, intercooler, and intake system to increase flow at higher RPM. We've done this to try and make a better shape power curve, a more drivable power curve, and more top end power so the car is faster. So this is a larger compressor wheel. This one's made by a company called Pure. And this makes the compressor a lot more efficient at higher flow and makes a lot more top end power. And you can see the difference here. It's fairly dramatic, especially up near Redline. In addition, Carbon makes a control unit to add to the software, which enables us to contour boost at the very high RPM. It does this by not having just a boost pressure change like most aftermarket control units, but having a matrix inside where you can program boost versus RPM. Therefore, we don't do any adding of any flow at lower RPM, because we're already getting as much torque or more torque than we really want. We just added higher RPM to take advantage of the intake and the heat exchanger and the big turbocharger. The net gain is 171 horsepower or 674 at the flywheel. A phenomenal gain with a stock engine on the car. And this engine's completely stock, still has the catalytic converter on it, and will pass an emissions test. In addition, we have this really nice carbon fiber intake, which flows a lot more air at the very high RPM. It doesn't really do much for peak power. It doesn't do anything for peak torque. What it does is it stops the power from falling off once you pass peak horsepower, so it hangs longer toward redline, makes a more gradual drop off, makes it so when you rev the engine, it pulls harder at higher RPM. It does this because it reduces the restriction going to the turbocharger, and the turbocharger is not turning more RPM to try and make the boost. It slows the turbocharger down. That reduces the charge air temperature, just like putting a bigger compressor wheel on does, makes the charge air cooler, and you get a lot more top end power. In addition, we also add an intercooler and an oil heat exchanger for the transmission. So for some reason AMG use this as a transmission cooler and they use the same water to cool this as they do the intercooler. So what happens is when you drive hard and the transmission gets warm it transfers that heat into the intercooler, heats up the intake charge and costs power. Particularly if you make repeated accelerations like you're on a racetrack during a track day or going down a long country road where you're doing repeated accelerations or you live in a hot climate. So there's a company called Dime. They raced the Mercedes in Pirelli World Challenge, and they took the stock heat exchanger off, put another one on, that's the entire length of the car. But not only that, they separate out the intercooler 
from the transmission cooler. So it is a separate transmission cooler with a separate circuit. And then they put a large heat exchanger for the intercooler as well. So we could easily make more torque than we're even making. This engine will probably make 50 more than, than it is right now, but we intentionally don't because we're trying to do is we don't want more torque than horsepower. We also don't want more torque that we can generate traction for with the suspension system. Because what basically happens is you leave a traffic light, it breaks the tires loose, tires go up in smoke, the car doesn't accelerate. But then at higher RPM, if it doesn't make higher RPM power, the power falls off and then you short shift it, it lights the tires up again, it falls on its face again, and it just doesn't make good acceleration. What we're trying to sell is better acceleration. So what we do to get better acceleration is we reduce the torque a little bit and we do all these other components, all this tuning to get higher RPM power. So the engine will flow at higher RPM and the power bends very wide and the tires and the suspension can handle the load and the car stays hooked up and accelerates quickly through all the gears. In addition, by reducing the torque a little bit, it's less likely to break drivetrain components and the engine. All carbon power parts come with a four-year, 50,000-mile factory matching warranty, including consequential damages. So what that means is not only do we cover our own components, but if our tuning causes your engine or transmission or anything in your drivetrain to fail, Carbon will pay for the repair for that. So it gives you uh, basically comfort that you can modify your car and make it very quick, still pass an emissions test, and it won't give you any trouble. So I want to talk a little bit about Aero. We searched and searched and searched for a good spoiler and we finally found one made by Mode Carbon. And the reason we like it is it's very high, has a fairly steep angle, looks similar to a NASCAR spoiler even though it's a little bit shorter than that. And it creates actually measurable downforce in the back of the car and improves stability at high speed, which the car really needs given the, the speed it has right now. Since we've added 171 horsepower and 150 pound-feet of torque and removed the speed governor, the car will do nearly 200 miles an hour car was a little bit unstable at that speed, so we added some downforce to both the back and the front. So let's now go to the front of the car. To match the rear spoiler, we added a front splitter made by a company called Racing and Carbon. This protrudes out a little bit. Very nice looking part. Adds a little bit of downforce to the front to match the downforce in the rear, and again increases stability by stopping the nose from lifting at high speed. The Carbon C63 AMG comes in three different models, a GT, a GTS, and a GTR. This is a GTS, the middle conversion. The GTR adds to this a low compression engine with forged pistons and rods, modification to the direct ejection pump and cylinders to flow more air through the cylinder heads, as well as additionally larger turbochargers and exhaust manifolds for even more flow. Makes an additional 75 horsepower, bringing it up to 750 horsepower. It also makes an additional 34 pound-feet of torque, making the torque 700. That's it for our tour of the C63 at Carbon. Go to our website and visit if you'd like to see more about the car. And thank you very much for following along.